Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Jean Bart. And we got a doozy of a game for you guys. And I hope you guys had a great weekend. Happy Father's Day. I know I'm a little late to those of you who are uh, fathers out there and to those of you who are stepfathers out there that stepped up to help uh, you know, take care of kids that aren't necessarily yours, but you took care of them as they are. So, uh, we appreciate all the dads out there. And, with that being said, let's get right into it. We're going to be on Tears of the Desert. And this match is going to be really, really crazy. Because it's going to come right down to the wire... And it's everything in my abilities to try to to win this for the team. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. So uh, right off the bat, we're gonna go forward. You guys know how I do. Try to win the side. Uh, it is epicenter, so we have to keep that in mind as well. But we definitely want to try to win our side first. Now you guys know my build for the John Bart is not the pure accuracy build. It is actually the build for. Um, I guess it would be considered a tank build, even though it's not really a tank build. It's mainly a reload build. Uh, so I believe we have a 16 second reload or something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. But those that's 16 seconds for a... This is literally... This thing can fire as fast as an Alaska, basically. And it is capable of firing those 15 inch guns. 381, I believe, millimeter high velocity battleship guns. Now, right off the bat, we have a shot at the Richelieu. Don't really have a good good look at him. He's a little out of our range. So we don't take the shot. We just keep pushing up. Clearly, they're already in the circle, but we're about to be contesting, so I'm not worried about that. We want to try to win the side and get crossfires across the map. Uh, the left side of this map, or the north, the north uh, west corner, or, yeah, the northwest corner, tends to be the hot spot. So if we can move up quickly on this side, secure this flank, we can get some nice little crossfires going to stop those guys from doing what they're doing. Uh, you can see we do have a Sinop and a North Carolina. That's actually not scary to me whatsoever because they don't overmatch me, but guess what? I do overmatch them. And by the time that we actually get into a position where we can uh, get into a fight with them, we're going to be close enough that our accuracy is not going to be a problem, if you know what I mean. Remember not an accuracy build whatsoever so we want to be up close and personals to make to take full advantage of those those guns now eastern dragon has pushed up way into the center of the map already which is not preferable and uh so we're going to reach out make sure we get him uh, i was seeing if he was going to turn he's at like nine kilometers so we take a shot into his bow we get a good result giving us about eleven thousand damage now as he goes to turn here like, this is just begging for it. He's angled at this point. We can go through that side plating and citadel the crap out of him. And if he goes even further broadside, like he is doing, this should be a death strike. But remember, we're not an accuracy build. Now, he gets touched by us another 17,000, but he doesn't get killed, of course, because why would we death strike somebody? But uh, he goes further broadside, and you can see that reload booster coming in clutch, and this time we hit him with four overpins and don't kill him. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? But it doesn't matter. The friends are able to take him down. And that leaves me versus this Sinop who's creeping. He's creeping because he knows that he f***ed up. He wants to get a shot on me. But he doesn't realize I'm already loaded. I'm already in position. And he is over-angled right in front of me. That should be death. But of course, <laughs> can't death strike him. We leave him with just enough to cause me problems for at least a little bit longer. Now obviously... I'm going to beat his reload by a lot, so I'm not worried. He's still broadside. He's dead here, and he knows he's dead. So he unfortunately gets our guns knocked out. Like, really? Really? But it doesn't matter. We still had one, and that's all we needed. Now, North Carolina's coming up. We're going to go ahead, damage con, get our guns both loaded again because we want to have full firepower available for this shot. Now, if he bow tanks us, there's a good chance with our high-velocity 15-inch guns that we are able to citadel him through the bow. North Carolina's nose is short enough that you can absolutely citadel him straight through the front of the ship. 
Uh, he is angled, however, which is going to throw that off a little bit. So uh, while we can still damage him, we're not as likely to citadel him, and this is when the accuracy starts to show up. He's like, ah, yeah, sorry, I know you really wanted to hurt that guy there, but, you know, you've had some pretty good RNG up to this point. I'm going to need you to chill the f*** out. <laughs> That's what the game says. So, uh, yeah, he goes full bow into me, and remember what we said, we can citadel him through the bow, uh, but unfortunately we don't get that. Uh, probably aimed a little too high there, but again, I'm trying with our lack of accuracy even at this kind of range I'm trying to aim high so that I hit the water less so that I'm actually able to get more more hits to the target preferably um, Just as we get our guns loaded we go ahead and take that shot and again accuracy says no <laughs> It's weird how accuracy does like you've seen the shots that we've had so far and for whatever reason, you can see, that's why I didn't want to rush around the corner. I'm paying attention to the map. I realize there's a cruiser behind me. It's a Fiji. We know he has torpedoes. We know he's probably trying to torp us. And he's actually doing a pretty good job of trying to flank. However, he is spotted, and uh, this is not going to go in his favor. Um, it's a Fiji. And French magic bullets versus Fiji, not going to go in his favor at all. As he thinks he's, he's going to just rush me. Uh, I don't know what his thought process here was. He, he can clearly see this entire time that I know he's coming. And yet he's still just like, oh, I'm going. It's too late for me to stop now. And wait for it. Really? Really? This is the one? This is the one? But it doesn't matter. He, he already used his torps on the left side of the ship, so he has to flip back to the other side to torp me. You can see I'm already going forward. He's going to have minimal launch angles, and of course, we're going to dev strike him this time. And you can see, not sure what his launch angles is, so I go ahead and I go in as far as I can. I'm not seeing any torpedoes, meaning he didn't actually get to launch them, which is huge. Had he launched them, that could have been real, real bad. Now, we're at 139,000 damage, we've got two kills, we've got six citadels, we've already got a high cow, and we have a dev strike, and we have used very little hit points. And we still have five heals! Five! I know! Uh, now, I believe it's, it's in the near future where I go ahead and pop my first heal, because I have five of them. So, I'm going to go ahead and use one of them, I think, to uh, recover the little bit of hit points we do have. It's about 5,000, so that'll give us like an extra 5,000 hit points before we go into this fight. But what it also does is it allows us to start reloading the next heal. Uh, New Orleans gets spotted out here. He's broadside to everybody, uh, and I should be able to absolutely blast this man. Like, he's, he should be dead here. If all goes well. And uh, we do get a Citadel, but we do not kill him, unfortunately. Now, we do take the hit there. There's the heal. Uh, managed to get hit by the King George. And again, HE versus uh, the French battleships, hugely effective. Hugely effective. Especially battleship caliber HE. But AG in general is very effective against uh, any any of the French battleships. It's nasty. Um, it's one of, the, one of their biggest weaknesses. So me coming out here to fight these guys, obviously, I have to do something. They have 846 points. I am the only one who has done any significant damage, I believe, in, in this lobby. Uh, so we have to push out. we got to go. So we've got our speed boost going. We're going to catch this guy broadside. And this should be an absolute paddling. And we get a decent result, but not a great one. Only We got six hits, but not enough damage. Uh, but he's gonna get turned away from us now anybody who's ever played the uh, British battleships know that Kiting away in a British battleship is a recipe for disaster. They have really really Terrible armor at the back of the ship that always seems to allow the worst possible things to happen now Our secondaries are actually doing a pretty good job of setting fires. That's our second fire in this match from our secondaries um, but again King George he has tiny guns, he's shooting HE, and thank God he decides to shoot my teammate rather than shoot me here. So we go ahead, we aim high, again looking for that hit, we get the, the hits together, and we get the kill. Now we still have a cruiser behind me. So I'm trying to protect my cruiser and hope that my cruiser doesn't do anything incredibly stupid. Now there's a Richelieu over here. If I can go over here and kill this Richelieu, then my cruiser should have a chance at killing the freaking destroyer. Now, we are going to take some torps here, which is not good. I didn't, I honestly thought behind that island he would not get a chance to torp me. 
I was wrong. He did torp me. Uh, we don't have will to rebuild because we're using the, the special commander. So we're going to just charge straight at this Richelieu. At this point, ramming is on the table. Unfortunately, we lost our cruiser. Now, this Richelieu and I both have the exact same thing in mind. I'm flooding to death. Uh, and I, sure, I'll be able to put out the flood, so I'm gonna actually go ahead, avoid, or try to not ram the guy, because I need to try to kill him. So, I don't wanna, I, I actually have a chance to win this match, potentially. I've stopped all of their points production, so now it's coming down to a brawl between the two of us. I knock out one of his guns, I get the first shot, you can see I'm gonna go ahead and switch, I was thinking about switching to HE, then I switch back to AP. He's turning in, and at this point, I know what he's doing. He's ramming me. And then, in this moment, this is the perfect play for him to make. Why? Because he guarantees the win. If he rams me, I die, and he gets the win because they have the points advantage. And you can see, unfortunately, he does get it. He gets the Kraken on a ram, too, which is always something you enjoy. So he gets the win. He gets the Kraken. I have no problem with that ram at all. That was actually the perfect decision for him. However, it also catapults my damage up to 245,000 damage. Seven Citadels, four kills, one shy of a Kraken. Imagine if we both got a Kraken on that ram. Wouldn't that have been sick? But yeah, top of the leaderboard, 2100 base XP in a battleship and a loss. Tell me I didn't do enough in that one. <laughs> Sometimes you just can't carry hard enough. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.